While most gamers are only now getting to experience what 4K gaming has to offer, this resolution has been around for a while. In areas outside of gaming, it's already old news, especially in the TV market. Instead, the new feature that's used to sell TVs now is HDR. And it certainly is a feature worth getting excited about. HDR arguably has a more profound impact on image quality than 4K. Whereas increasing the resolution makes the image sharper, HDR can make it appear more vivid and lifelike. But while 4K is rather straightforward, in that it signifies the number of pixels every display with that resolution is guaranteed to have, HDR is a lot harder to understand. To make matters worse, for a display to be marketed as HDR, it only needs to be able to receive HDR signals. So just seeing the letters HDR plastered on the box doesn't tell you anything about how good the image quality will actually be. And on top of that, there are half a dozen different HDR encoding standards, like HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision, that all carry different implications with regards to image quality. This may seem like a lot to unpack, but there's no cause for concern, as we'll cover everything you need to know in this video. So without any further ado, let's begin. First up, let's look at what HDR even means. HDR, or High Dynamic Range, is a technology used to enhance the viewing experience by expanding the dynamic range. Dynamic range is a lot like contrast. It also makes the colors appear more vivid and requires more bit depth. But to understand the gist of it, we can just stick to the contrasts. The idea here is to make the lights brighter and the shadows darker without losing any of the detail in said light and shadow. Now, there are a couple of requirements here. Firstly, you need content that supports HDR. If a film wasn't shot with HDR in mind, you can't play it in HDR. If a game doesn't support this feature, you can't play it in HDR. It's as simple as that. Secondly, you need a TV that has a good maximum brightness. As we've already mentioned, the only requirement for a TV to be marketed as an HDR TV is to be able to receive HDR signals. This is unfortunate as it means that a lot of budget TVs that boast about having this feature, which they technically do, really can't do it justice. In many cases, they make the content in HDR look worse than in regular SDR. The main culprit here is the maximum brightness. Screen brightness is measured in nits, and most HDR content is filmed with a maximum brightness of 1000 nits in mind. TV manufacturers love to keep this spec hidden, but in most affordable models, it won't even exceed 300 nits. These TVs then assign the brightest colors in any given content to the maximum brightness that they can reach and work their way down from that. And this is where the problems start to pile up. Now let's take a look at how the various encoding standards handle HDR differently. First up, we've got HDR10. This is by far the most common encoding standard, partly because it's open source, which means that manufacturers don't have to pay any royalties to use it. This is also why you're most likely to find HDR10 in affordable TVs. Furthermore, it's also one of the most technically inferior encoding standards as it relies on static metadata. Basically what happens when you watch HDR content that relies on static metadata is that your TV only gets two points of reference for an entire movie. How bright the brightest color is and how dark the darkest color is. Then it's up to the TV to decide how it should handle the overall brightness. And this can lead to a lot of problems. For example, imagine you're watching a dimly lit horror movie. Everything's all gloom and doom, darkness and shadows, almost as if no character in the entire movie has ever paid an electric bill. But, and this part is crucial, there is an explosion in the movie. It could only be a single explosion, but it's dazzling. Because HDR10 will only tell the TV what the brightest and darkest colors are in the movie, then the TV may make the entire movie appear brighter than it should be. All because of that one explosion that occupies the screen for just a handful of frames. So, all in all, HDR10 has two things going against it. It's the encoding standard most likely to be supported by TVs where the HDR feature is no more than a marketing gimmick, and it employs static metadata. HDR10 Plus fixes one of these issues. To keep up with the technical superiority of Dolby Vision, dynamic metadata capabilities were added to HDR10, resulting in HDR10 Plus. And this makes a world of difference. Now, instead of the TV only receiving info on what the brightest and darkest colors are in an entire movie, it receives this info on a scene-by-scene -scene or even frame-by-frame -frame basis. 
This means that the theoretical horror movie with a single bright explosion does not have the potential to mess up the intended overall brightness. But do keep in mind that HDR10 is still open source, so manufacturers still put it in TVs that don't have the requisite specs needed to display proper HDR. In fact, HDR10 and HDR10 Plus don't even place any requirements on TV manufacturers. They do feature some loose recommendations, but these recommended specs do not need to be met for a TV to hit the shelves. Now, this doesn't mean HDR10 Plus is bad. Thanks to dynamic metadata, it will only display content in serviceable HDR, even in TVs that don't sport impressive specs. And if you're ready to break the bank, you can get HDR10 Plus to look as gorgeous as Dolby Vision does on spec.tvs. And speaking of… As you might have guessed, Dolby Vision isn't open source. It's a proprietary technology owned by Dolby, so for manufacturers to use it, they need to pay royalties. What's more, there are actual requirements this time around, as laid out by Dolby. Consequently, manufacturers aren't nearly as inclined to put Dolby Vision in TVs that can't make the most out of it. So if a TV supports Dolby Vision, you're much more likely to get good HDR capabilities out of it. One downside of Dolby Vision is that it has less content produced for it than HDR10 or HDR10. HDR10 Plus. It is supported by Netflix though, so it's not like it's lacking in content either. For reference, Amazon Prime is all about HDR10 and HDR10 Plus, so if you've got a streaming service you prefer, it's worth checking out what type of HDR it supports before making any commitments. Now there is one more HDR encoding standard that isn't talked about as much, and that's HLG or Hybrid Log Gamma. Most streaming services support one type of HDR or another. And as we've mentioned in the introduction to this video, HDR has been the next big thing in TV markets since 4K came out. But the problem with HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision is that they aren't broadcast friendly. With how many people own HDR TVs only to have this feature lay dead while watching broadcasts, TV networks needed a way to fight back. So BBC and NHK teamed up to create a form of HDR that could be broadcast in a way that would work on HDR TVs while still displaying as regular SDR on SDR TVs. The result is HDR that isn't nearly as good as anything we've seen so far, but still manages to elevate broadcast image quality to newer heights. Now, you may be wondering, how come there are all these HDR encoding standards, but we've yet to mention Display HDR 400 or Display HDR 1000 or any of the other Display HDRs you can find in gaming monitors? The answer is quite simple. TVs and monitors follow different standards. The Display HDR standard is set by Visa. You can find the summary of Display HDR specs linked in the description. Thankfully, you don't have to hunt for maximum brightness, which is the most important spec as it's shown in the name. So Display HDR 1000 monitors have a maximum brightness of 1000 nits, Display HDR 400 monitors have a maximum brightness of 400 nits, and so on. You get the gist. There are, of course, monitors that feature HDR that aren't Visa certified, and we would advise you to avoid these monitors as the quality of HDR they offer would likely make you want to play everything in SDR and never look back. In all honesty, even Display HDR 400 isn't the best when it comes to HDR gaming. If you're serious about gaming in HDR, we recommend getting at least a Display HDR 600 certified monitor, although brighter is better. And that about does it for this video. HDR is one of the most convoluted technologies to wrap your head around, simply due to how many encoding standards there are and how unregulated some of them are. To sum up everything quickly, HDR10 is already completely obsolete. The only reason it's still around is to prey on unsuspecting consumers who, understandably, think that HDR means HDR. That said, HDR10 Plus fixes most of the issues HDR10 has. Even though it's still used in cheap TVs, HDR10 Plus won't ever be as bad at displaying HDR content simply due to its use of dynamic metadata. Dolby Vision is the most regulated of these standards, so it's hard to go wrong with it. Unfortunately, it's the most expensive HDR technology, so it has that going against it. HGL is a broadcast-friendly HDR. All we can say is that it's functional, but it doesn't have a particularly high ceiling. And finally, if you're looking to get an HDR monitor instead of an HDR TV, make sure to get one that is Display HDR certified. Any certification is better than no certification, but for gaming, Display HDR 600 is 
is the lowest you should go. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you never miss a new video. New content is on the way, including both informative videos like this one and buyer's guides. Or you could just browse our backlog of videos if you're interested in any topic. Chances are we've probably already covered it. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.